In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about the mole, and we're going to focus on molar mass. So the molar mass of any element is really a conversion factor between its mass in grams and the amount of it in moles. Uh, so for carbon, our molar mass would be 12.0 uh, grams of carbon atoms equals one mole of a carbon atom. And we could write this as an equality, like I just did, or we could write it as a fraction in one of two ways if we were trying to solve a dimensional analysis problem. And remember that 12.01 grams of carbon per mole is similar to 12.01 atomic mass units per atom, right? It's the same numeric value, different unit that's not um, a direct metric conversion. And so we can calculate the molar mass for an element just by looking at, or determine it just by looking at the periodic table, but we can calculate it for a compound um, by adding up the molar mass of each of the individual atoms that are in that compound, just like we would if we were calculating the mass of a molecule in atomic mass units of just one. And this time it's now for a mole of them. Ah. And so it, it We'll calculate this from the periodic table. You'll take that molar mass, that atomic mass that is on, on the periodic table for each element. This usually has a decimal place unless you're in the really, really big elements. And then you'll take the sum of those and for each element, you'll multiply the atomic mass by the number of atoms that you have in the molecule. Uh, so this is the same type of calculation that we did for formula mass. Uh, so You'll also see, before we just walk through an example, you'll see it uh, written in two different ways. You'll see molar mass and molar weight. And on Earth, that's the same. Um, and so you can, it, I'll, I might go between them. I prefer molar mass because that's, that's I think, kind of how I was chemistry raised. Um, but it's okay to use either. Uh, so to calculate the molar mass of our example here, which is glucose. Yeah. Uh, so it's, C6, H12, O6. That means I have six carbons, I have 12 hydrogens, and I have six oxygens. Those values are coming from the subscripts that tell me the mole ratio of the elements within the molecule, or the atomic ratio of the atoms within the molecule, say it either way. So to calculate this, I would take that uh, six again and multiply it by the molar mass of carbon. And then I would take 12 and multiply that by the molar mass of hydrogen and six times the molar mass of oxygen. And those molar masses, I'm just pulling off the periodic table. And then once I, I take those products, I'm gonna sum those three together. And when I do, I get a value that's 180.15 grams per mole. Now, uh, a note about significant figures, uh, and th there's not perfect agreement across chemists or chemistry faculty members for that regard. Uh, so to determine a molar mass, we need to actually measure the weight of uh, isotope of an atom and then determine and measure the isotopic abundances. And then we determine atomic mass, right, uh, for any element. And so that is a measurement that's taken place. And so you can be like, oh, well, this is a measured value. It should have significant figures. And some go with that. However, we've taken taken a ton of these measurements until we've reached an accepted value by the scientific community. And so because of that, it's become a definition. We've had done so many measurements that we could say, no, really, carbon is always 12.011, no matter how, like, if you're getting something different, you're not measuring it correctly. Um, and so because of that, these have evolved into definitions. And when you read it off a periodic table, I consider that a definition or a conversion factor because it's an accepted value that you yourself did not measure or someone didn't measure in the lab for the purposes of the experiment. And so that means it'll have infinite significant figures or none, depending on your perspective, uh, glass half full, glass half empty, uh, but it would be treated as an exact number. Uh, and you might run into those that, that will argue the opposite. So that's my opinion and for this class. So let's talk about using it as a conversion factor and walk through an example. So uh, we are going to need to understand the number of particles we have and how they collide with one another, right? And we're not going to want to work in numbers that are like times 10 to the 42nd. Uh, and so we're going to talk about the number of particles in terms of our counting number, the mole. 
And so we're often going to need to know the number of something. And to do that, we will take the mass of it. And so we need to be able to fluidly convert between the mass of something, the number of moles it has, and the number of actual atoms or molecules that that represents. And so we're gonna use molar mass to convert between mass and moles right here. And if we need to convert between moles and a number of particles, we'll use Avogadro's number instead. And so these are our two conversion factors that we'll use to kind of go in between these values. Um, so let's look at an example of how many moles and molecules are in 1.0 grams of carbon dioxide. And we've already done a little bit of work with carbon dioxide, so we know it's molar mass, uh, which is helpful. Um, so let's start out with what's been given to us, our 1.0 grams. I'm gonna write that out here. 1.0 grams of my carbon dioxide. When I am working in these types of conversion problems, especially as we go into stoichiometry, I try to write the molecule that the measurement is referring to after it to help track it. Oftentimes we'll find ourselves doing conversions where we have the mass of one molecule and the mass of another, and the units are the same, they're grams, but they're very different values. Um, and so I, I track the molecule as part of the unit. So it'd be grams of CO2 would be my unit for this all together. Like, okay, so side note. Uh, so what I would want to do is figure out how many moles I have. So I need to convert this. So I end up with an answer that's in moles. Uh, and so I'm gonna to want to have my moles units on the top and my grams of CO2 on the bottom. If it helps, I can remember to track this with the actual particle. So moles of CO2 will give me moles of CO2. So the conversion factor that has grams and moles in it is my molar mass. Uh, now, previously we calculated that the molar mass of carbon dioxide was 44.01 grams per mole. And that was in a previous slide. So looking at that, sometimes it helps to write these as equalities, that it's 44.01 grams is equal to one mole CO2. So my 44.01 grams goes on the bottom of my conversion factor and my one mole of CO2 goes on the top. Plugging that into my calculator, I'm gonna get a value that's 0 0.22, oh, sorry. I missed a zero on that, 0 0.02272 moles. And I have one, two significant figures for my measurement of the mass of carbon dioxide. So I'm gonna go two significant figures and I'll round this then to 0 0.023 moles of CO2. All right, so that's half of this. Then what about molecules? We're gonna need to, to figure out the number of molecules. So to, to figure out molecules, it, it would be best to be in moles. So I'm actually gonna build off this number that we just calculated um, and make that my new starting point. So I have 0 0.02272 uh, moles of CO2. And I'm gonna put a line under the second significant figure to track my significant figures through this problem. And I am going to multiply that by a conversion factor that'll give me an answer that's in molecules. So that means I'm going to want moles of CO2 on the bottom of my conversion factor and molecules on the top. And the, the anything per mole, so I, in this case it's going to be molecules, is going to tell me I need to use Avogadro's number. And so Avogadro's number is going to be for every one mole of CO2, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. So now uh, my moles will cancel. I'll be left with units of molecules and I can plug this into my calculator. And when I do, I get a value that is 1.4 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of CO2. And I, I rounded there for you to the second significant figure already to translate the two sig figs that we had in our starting point. 